Nice. So um, just to introduce myself, um, for those who don't know me, I'm Callum. I'm one of the Green Students Committee co-conveners. Um, and I'll let Amelia introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Amelia. I'm also one of the Green Student Committee co-conveners. And my pronouns are she, her. Um, my pronouns are he, they as well. Um, no preference. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to be going over why you should stand um, to be an officer on your SU. Um, we'll be offering some kind of like general advice and some campaign tips. Um, and later on, we're going to hear from people who have ran or have been SU officers before um, to kind of get their experiences from campaigning and what it was like um, to do the role. Oh, why am I going to do the next slide? That's exciting. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through like my run, starting your campaign, running your campaign, some like handy tips um, that we've like come up with. Um, and then, yeah, we'll move on to our Q&A session, which so if you have any questions as well, feel free to type them in the chat um, or later on, you can just like raise your hand and we can answer them then. So probably the first big question is why should you run for your SU there's the very like kind of like typical answers that you get that it's like great for your CV that it's a job you get accommodation at some universities but probably the biggest reason that um we think you should run is you get a greater chance to affect change um and that is essentially probably the main motivating factor for a lot of people um it's if you're upset about accommodation or student fees or the way that university invests in stuff being an SU officer means that you get kind of like a say over the policies that the SU has and can direct the university to do better on these things um which is probably the main pull for a lot of um progressives and people who believe in social and climate justice um because it's a way to get things done at your universities um, and like I said, there are like the kind of typical narratives around like learning new skills, getting paid. Um, it's a full time job uh, and you get the opportunity to learn new skills, which are kind of like crucial to then take on into other things. And you get to be part of a national network. So like SU officers work across the country um, representing the national student voice, which also like links back to having a great chance to affect change. Um, it means that you can like really campaign on national issues um, as well. So they were kind of like the main three pull factors that we considered. Um, and we'll also be asking people later why, like what encouraged them to run in the first place as well. And then, so once you kind of decided why, the, why you're running, um, you'll need to start your campaign. And there are a couple of things that you might want to consider when doing that. Um, so I know in Bath um, and probably the same at a lot of SUs, there are drop in and training sessions for candidates or people considering running um, and lots of like resources online about campaigning and how to do the campaign. So take a look at those first, uh, maybe organize, have a look at which talks you want to go to, which things might be relevant for you and the roles that you want to apply to. Um, there'll also be role descriptions on the SU websites as well. Um, if you are kind of unsure which one to stand for, um, I think like typically you've got like president and then a bunch of other roles as well. Um, and like I said, some SUs hold drop in and training sessions for candidates. Um, so they can, they often tend to go through things like what the job entails, um, how to campaign, how to encourage candidates um, and how to kind of build up those skills. Like, so it's kind of like this, but probably more tailored towards um, your SU because different SUs have different rules. Um, but this is, this is like some general information. Um, and on those rules as well, the SU will have uh, their rules on campaigning. Um, so you should, uh, when you apply, they might send you like a list of like campaign rules that you should definitely look through and consider and make sure that you um, stick to. Um, so they may already have a dedicated FAQ section on rules as well. So just have a quick look through that. Make sure that when you're prepping your communications and your campaign materials, you're in line with those rules because then you won't necessarily cross cross a line that you shouldn't um it doesn't i don't think it tends to be an issue a lot of the time so but just make sure that you look through them and also um check the rules for budgets and campaign spending uh, make sure you know what you can spend the money on for your campaign how to spend it um, and how much you can spend and like the different ways that you need to kind of back up that spending whether you need receipts and like the ways to file that so definitely just understand um, your SU's campaign rules and they probably will have a session on that to um, describe those in more detail um, and they'll also have contacts like the returning officer and the elections team that you can get in touch with if you have any questions on those rules as well. Um, something that we think is also really valuable is having a look at what other previous candidates have done, which is probably why we're <laughs> having the panel later as well. 
Um, oftentimes, a lot of the people who have ran in the past will still have their materials up on Instagram, um, maybe on a website, their manifestos might still be up. Um, so you can have a look through those, see what messaging they're using, see what kind of design that they've done as well, if you want to take inspiration and look at the tone and the structure that they use and kind of learn from those, because if they've done it and they've done it successfully, it's a really nice place to kind of get some inspiration. Um, even if your kind of strategy is going to be a little bit different, if your messaging is going to be a bit different, it's still nice to kind of like have a look and see how to construct those materials um, if it's your first time doing a campaign like this. Um, and the last bit on on this slide is to have very like clear messaging when you're doing your campaign as well. Um, I think people's attention spans can be quite short, um, especially when engaging with um, SU campaigns, obviously alongside studies. So make sure people know what you stand for. Um, choose some really clear and easily understood messages that you can kind of talk about quite um, without like having to spend an hour discussing all of your ideas. You'll have an opportunity to do that at hustings and stuff, but. Um, you need to make sure that you kind of like have clear messages that people can relate to um, and also um, like remember when they go to like tick the box or rank you um, in the voting. So in terms of what materials you'll need for your campaign, um, it might be worth considering if you want to do more in-person campaigning or online. So in-person might include getting posters or printouts of your manifesto or like business cards that you can hand out to students. Um, and this also can include getting things like Canva Premium so that you can make your manifestos look nice and pretty and stuff. Um, so that's just one thing to consider for the campaigning as a whole, but also the approach that you take can be very different depending on what kind of person you are and what sort of message you want to get out there. So some people prefer in-person campaigning because it's more engaging with students and you can have conversations. And it also might mean that you can explain how voting works and get more votes that way. Um, but yeah, having like physical things in conjunction with online things like having a social media account can be a great way to bring the two together. Um, in terms of hustings, so this is usually set up by your student union. So most of the work is kind of done for you. All you need to do is attend and prepare sometimes an opening and closing speech. And um, you might need to just have your main manifesto ideas prepared so that you can justify and advocate for yourself. Um, it's good to have a look at previous hustings uh, just to get an idea of the feel of what the event is like and uh, how you might be able to persuade some students to, to vote for you. Um, and the last thing really is taking care of yourself is one thing that can be easily overlooked but is very important for candidates because campaigning can be very tiring both emotionally and physically. So it's important that you take bre breaks, eat the right food, and uh, make sure that you're having time to socialize as well. So, I mean, it can be a lot of pressure keeping up with studies, extracurriculars and campaigning. But if you are struggling, you can reach out to the student union. And uh, if you have an advice team at your uni or wellbeing team, asking if they have any support available. Um, another thing is a lot of student unions have like wellbeing support kind of packages in a way so they might have staff buddies that they pair you up with or they might have a well-being space on campus that you can use and I think the main thing is if you need to lean on that support just don't be ashamed to because it, it can be a very tiring and demanding period. Um, in terms of what to expect when elected um, you will be at the forefront of making key decisions um, at your student union and you will be talking with key stakeholders and having meetings with people high up in the university um, because you, you will have quite an influential position. And as a trustee, when, when you're elected, you become a trustee, um, you can also set the strategic direction of your student union. Um, which is quite a unique experience that you can get from this uh, role. So that's one thing you can get out of it. Um, you can also just expect a lot of work experience within just one year. So you'll develop a lot of experience with recruiting people and managing projects and public speaking, whether if that's at student council or graduations or other events that involve a lot of students. 
And you'll also develop key skills such as generally managing projects and negotiation. And I think probably the most important thing with the role that you do is you will become the face of the student union and you will represent thousands of students and you can dramatically change the student experience by pushing for institutional change. So your ideas will influ influence the outcome, outcomes that are made at your student union. So I think the main thing to think about before you run is the sort of ideas that you have and how you will translate those ideas into reality. And that's something to think about while, while you're making your manifesto and uh, what lasting impacts you would like to see. Um, I think that's everything for me. So I think it's the Q&A next. Um, yeah, so I'll just qu quickly introduce the panel um, in a moment. Um, but this session, so we have a couple of pre-prepared questions, but if anyone does have anything that pops up in their head, do feel free to send them in the chat or um, like raise your hand in the call. I'll stop sharing so you can see everyone's lovely faces um, in a moment. Um, but yes, so um, for the panel, we have uh, Kelsey, Jane, Blake and Elliot today. Um, and it would be really cool if we could go around, if you could introduce yourselves, your name, pronouns, and maybe what you have ran for or the positions that you've held um, regarding the SU in the past. And uh, we'll start with Blake, maybe, and then we'll go around. Hi, my name's Blake. Um, my pronouns are they, them, and I was the community officer last year at the University of Bath. Um, I also ran for SU president, which I was unsuccessful with, but... Um, it was a very, like, it was an interesting and different experience, which was um, nice considering that COVID affected my first one in quite quite a lot of ways. Uh, Jane, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jane. I use she, her pronouns. I was the vice president academic at the University of York's Graduate Students Association between 2019 and 2021. Um, and I currently work in a students union um, running their elections. Um, so I also have that side from um, the staff side of running them uh, rather than running in them, uh, which is a very different experience. And Kelsey? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Kelsey, I use they them pronouns, and I ran in 2022 um, to, for the SU Prez of uh, University of Oxford, uh, unsuccessfully, but again, a really enlightening and interesting experience, uh, looking forward to share that. Amazing, and Elliot. Hi everyone, I'm Elliot, I use he, they pronouns. Um, I ran at the University of Portsmouth Student Union for the Democracy and Campaigns Officer position. Um, I was back in 2021, 20, maybe. I can't remember that well. Um, but yeah. That's all really amazing. You've all been doing amazing work. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for standing for your SUs and coming along today. Um, our first question for you all is probably the most important. And it's like, what inspired you to run um, to be an SU officer in the first place? Um, and we'll probably go around in the same order that we introduce ourselves in. So Blake, Jane, Kelsey, and then Elliot. Sure. So I think um, as kind of um, meant, like, as you said in your slides, unsurprisingly, the, the biggest kind of inspiration or, or motivation to run to be an SU officer was that kind of desire to change things institutionally and structurally. I think um, I had a lot of like, I did the classic thing of forgetting that I was at university to study a degree and all of that kind of stuff and in, kind of engrossed myself in various different SU activities and um, inevitably came across many different kind of barriers to actually changing the things that um, myself and other students that I, I was kind of working with uh, thought were really needed to change. Um, and yeah, so I guess it was mostly from a kind of like want to be in the rooms where the conversations and decisions are happening um, and properly make sure that students unions are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is serving students. And I guess also being forces or making sure that universities are as close to being forces to change as they should be. Am I going next? Sorry, I can't remember the look we went in. Um, yeah, very much agree with what Blake just said, um, very much about wanting to change things. So I was 
Um, I did my master's at the University of York, so I'd only been there probably eight or so months um, at the time that I decided to run as an officer. Um, and I'd been an academic rep throughout that time. I was a rep in my undergrad as well. Um, so had already had a lot of like interaction with the university and the bureaucracy and how things work in quotation marks because they don't really work. They just kind of are very slow moving. Um, so I'd already kind of been involved in that change making quite a bit, um, particularly with people on my course. Um, and then sort of decided, why not, um, was I think my thought process, um, because I knew that there were things that I wanted to change. I knew that there were things that needed to be changed. Um, and I just thought, why not? Why not me? Um, why not try and see what would happen? Um, and then I did unexpectedly get elected, which I wasn't quite expecting. Um, but it did change the course of my life, which is very strange. Um, so I think it was really very much about wanting to make that change and having the opportunity to do that um, and having that platform where you can do that and where you can also talk to loads of students throughout campaigning and listen to them um, and learn from them as well about the things that are impacting them. Um, so, yeah, the change making element is very, very important. I think I'm next. Uh, thanks, Jane. And thanks, Blake. And I like, fully agree with all of that. I think um, I'm not one to like spout slogans, but I was thinking about this and the thing that came to mind was things that we say in the Greens, which is think global, act local. And I think actually that sums up why I decided to run. I saw so much of what was happening at the time. So I ran in, in January and February of 2022. So the treatment of students um, across the country, but also typically at my university um, during COVID was still very much um, fresh in my mind. Um, there was a lot of activism around things like rent strikes um, and there were like, national kind of questions about um, keeping students from marginalised backgrounds safe on campuses, all these sorts of things that I saw playing out nationally and I wanted my student union to play a bigger role in shaping the national agenda and sort of a collective response to some of these threats and also um, saw it at my university um, as a queer disabled student. I saw how a lot of these um, issues were affecting my friends, myself, the communities that I was embedded in. And that was um, a real kind of uh, motivation for me to run and try and again, make change and make things kind of better as much as I could. Um, I was already very involved in a lot of the organizing spaces at Oxford. There were rent strikers um, going on. There was always a lot of climate justice movements. I was involved in the, um, the queer and disability activism spaces within the SU. So, it was that kind of background that motivated me to, um, as Jane sort of said, like give it a go, see what could happen. Um, and I wasn't successful, but I um, feel like the campaign was was something I'm really proud of and something that I think I learned a lot from and definitely um, is probably partly responsible for why I'm still involved in this sort of thing today. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to obviously agree with everyone, everything everyone else has said. Um, for me, I ran, uh, in my third year and at that point I had already been in, quite heavily involved with the um, the wider student union so I'd been running societies um, I'd been at kind of other elected bodies in the student union but like I, I kind of saw it as the time for me to kind of be the change I wanted especially as I saw kind of a, a lack of ambition um, from the management of my student union and I saw you know there was lots that needed um changing at the same time as well um it was the same quite a fairly similar time when I joined the Green Party as well so that you know that was um you know a big pushing factor as well I'd say um so yeah there, there was a lot of different pushing factors but yeah I, I, I guess I wanted to be that you know be that change um that was so desperately needed Me. <clears throat> um, in terms of building your campaign, what approaches did each of you take? Um, should I go first again? Cool. Um, so I think definitely a really uh, useful starting point was having a look at the um, different, like the past manifestos from previous SABs, like particularly um, those that I'd kind of seen as quite impactful and influential and able to like 
bring certain narratives to the forefront of their roles. Um, so that's definitely a really good place um, to have a bit of a think about like what kind of different aspects of the different roles include as well. Um, I think as well, like um, if you have the opportunity and the ability to get in, in contact with some past SABs at your union, that could be really helpful too. Because um, a lot of the kind of like, I guess, nuances of working out what students at your particular um, university and union are actually caring about will um, be quite institution specific. So it is really useful to like get those network, like kind of use any networks you have with um, existing or previous SABs, sorry. Um, and ask them some of the questions you might be having. I think um, by far though, the thing that was the most valuable was speaking to other students, um, particularly um, those that were quite um, deeply involved within the um, within the students union, but also those that completely weren't, because I think that you can learn a lot from those that are just completely um, not interested in anything that the SU has to say, because uh, often it's um, there's a little bit more to, to that than it seems on the surface. Um, so yeah, I'd say talking to other people, also having a bit of a reflect on um, my own experiences and what kind of things I remember being really like, grr about <laughs> during my years at uni. Um, and yeah, I think also um, it's not really about building a campaign, but in terms of like building upon those ideas that you might have as the basis of your campaign, like actually the actual campaigning process can be really, um, really useful for shaping some of those ideas more and the kind of, um, especially if you end up getting the role that's useful. So uh, I think you can learn a lot from other candidates and other campaigns, even those that weren't successful. I'm guessing that we're going in the same order, so I'm next. Blake, you're going to end up going first to all of them. Um, <laughs> you might have to switch up. Um, yeah, I mean, again, agree with everything that Blake just said. Don't want to repeat it. Um, but yeah, particularly talking with students um, and like using your own experience as well. Like a lot of the things that you may be really angry about or may have had a really big impact on you are probably actually impacting lots of other students across the university. Um, so, you know, if they've just changed how their like entire academic year is structured and therefore it's causing havoc and a complete nightmare, it's probably impacting lots of other people as well. Um, to just kind of add on, if you're like a super nerd like me, um, there's like, there's so much like data and statistics out there of things that are like impacting students and you can, you can access most of that, which is really cool. Um, so if you want to look at something like the National Student Survey, um, even though as we as Greens dislike the National Student Survey and would like it abolished, it can still be a really useful resource because universities care about it a lot. Um, so you can look at things like that. Um, you can also look at um, what kind of the general national conversation is, what things are being picked up on. Um, there is obviously like depending on where you want to focus your campaign as well. If you want to go over some of those big national issues, you can talk about those um, or you can go way more local. It's really kind of up to you. Um, my other recommendation around kind of starting your campaign is looking at the role description that you're standing for as well. Um, if you're putting something in your manifesto that is actually another officer's responsibility, when you end up figuring out what you're doing, that can be a little bit of an awkward conversation um, and it's totally fine and you'll get through it. But sometimes if you're elected on a mandate that you then can't fulfill because you're literally not in the meetings, it can be really frustrating. Um, so yeah, that's in, in terms of kind of where to start in terms of like actually campaigning as well, though, I'd say that like, just because you've written your manifesto and you'll probably be limited to a certain number of words, most student unions do, or like questions or something like that, that doesn't just tie you to those things. You can talk about so many other things you could do like little mini manifestos for different groups of students or for particular issues. And that's the type of thing that while you're out campaigning and talking to students, you're likely to develop as well because things may come up that you didn't even know about, um, which is the really exciting part because it gives you so much to take with you um, and so much to bring with you and so much to learn as well um, because you know, depending on how big your university campus is, anywhere from probably about 10,000 up to 50,000, that's at least, you know, 10,000 different student experiences. Um, and while you probably can't represent every single individual one, um, knowing more about them can be really important. Um, that wasn't so much about campaigning, that was more just about manifesto -y stuff.
but thank you i'm not going to let your your mention and endorsement of the national student survey slide jane but um yeah, um, I agree with everything that, that, that Blake and Jane said. Again, what I was going to focus on, and not to repeat what they said, um, was actually the kind of more um, technical idea of how to build up a campaign. And for me, that was about identifying people I could work with, so people who could support my campaign, people who had skills and backgrounds and all that kind of stuff that was really valuable um, to to kind of supporting me in in, in that campaign. The things that I was thinking about were people skills. Do, do we have people who I knew who were really good at comms, for example, or really good at um, speech writing for hustings, for opening speeches, things like that. People who were really good at um, like graphic design for materials that we were allowed to design. Also thinking about were the group of people that I went to work with representative of the student body. So did we have undergrads and postgrads? Um, because my, my role that I was running for, for the student union president was covering both of those did we have people from different colleges because i was at a collegiate university did we have people from different academic backgrounds different socioeconomic backgrounds people with um from different kind of uh marginalized groups who could give that kind of perspective as well and then um also kind of capitalizing on the networks i was already a part of so people who were involved in things like the rent strikes and different societies and um, the climate movement people who bring a wealth of experience and knowledge and connections um, that was really valuable in building up my campaign because we could work together. It means that it's more manageable for for, for, for me as a candidate um, and also the campaign is more robust because you've got lots of different people's eyes over everything, lots of people contributing. Um, that was really important. So I agree with everything that's already been said, but I think that's something um, different that I wanted to touch on. Uh, yeah, everyone's already kind of said what I was going to add, but um, I, I, I particularly like the, uh, Jane's point about kind of mini uh, manifestos, because um, at the end of the day, your student union is only going to allow you a certain number of words uh, to put on up on their website. You might only have maybe three points in your major manifesto. Um, but those three points might not kind of resonate with all students. You know, some students might care a lot about, you know, environment, housing, tuition fees, um, you know, you name it. You're not going to be able to cover all of that in just three main points. So it's worth having a think about, um, you know, what you believe in more generally. Um, for myself as kind of a uh, policy minded person, that was quite easy and it's something I actually really enjoyed, um, you know, coming up with ideas around, you know, what we need to do with the housing situation or my approach to um, certain bits of national legislation. Um, Kelsey's point around kind of utilizing the people around you is also really good um i i heavily benefited off you know my uh, my housemate who did uh, film production so um i i used him to make my campaign video and paid him off in beer um i i um i visited my friend's class who uh, who did drama. Um, naturally, they were all very progressive, so they were all very keen on my campaign. Um, but looking a bit further out as well, utilise the people you know. So um, someone in my local party um, taught a class at a university, so I could visit her class and talk about my campaign. Um, you know, utilise the lecturers, you know. Um, so yeah, that that's the kind of what I would go off. Those are all very useful tips. Thanks, everybody. Um, so we're going to do this one in the reverse order now. <laughs> so we'll do Elliot, Kelsey, Jane, and then Blake. Um, and if you haven't already talked about this, um, how did you decide on your messaging? Um, or maybe if you've already kind of answered that question, what is maybe the main message that you had and how was it um, received if you've already said how you kind of identified the issues? Elliot. Yeah, so I, I would... Um, try and get a good breadth of, of what you're covering. Um, so to give an idea of what, what mine covered, um, it was um, accountability on like tuition fees, it was accessibility at the university, and it was um, 
making my universe, my students' union more kind of democratic. Um, and I felt for me, those were quite um, a wide breadth of ideas, um, which I, I kind of, uh, I, I kind of came up with them based on off my discussions um, with students, with uh, past uh, elected officers, with staff at the student union. Um, so that's kind of how I built up my um, messaging. Um, I, I think I probably could have done better on that messaging um, as I maybe didn't word it as well, but um, yeah, that's kind of how I went about mine. Thanks, Elliot. And yeah, I fully, fully agree with, with, I feel like I'm on a broken record here, everything that you've just said. Um, I think things that were really important for me when I was um, thinking about this was being aware of what the existing discourse already was. So obviously you've got your own messaging and you can, um, you might have, you know, you might come into this um, with something that really inspired you to run. And so that kind of makes up some of the basis of your own messaging and your own kind of content. But being super aware of, of the environment that's already around you, is there already issues that are sort of widely understood to be issues that need to be resolved on campus or at your university? Um, and kind of can you, um, capitalise isn't quite the right, right word, but can you kind of um, incorporate your messaging around those issues so that you're being relevant and you're kind of catching on to things that, that students are already thinking about and are already in the front of their mind? So for me, um, when I ran, um, we were really sadly, and, and as far as I understand, well, throughout the whole of the rest of my time at university and afterwards, still having a really big problem on campus with transphobia um, and more broadly with queerphobia um, due to some of the actions of certain societies and things like that. So being really, really strong on, on messaging that um, we were going to kind of uh, work to, ta to tackle transphobia, to make trans inclusive um, spaces, both academically and in extracurricular things and in the SU was really important. Um, lecture capture in terms of um, academic accessibility was a huge thing. I get the sense from most universities, it's always a huge thing. Um, so just being really aware of that was really important. And then I think um, other things I wanted to touch on um, is always being kind of honest and true to your values. I mentioned just then that you might have come in with some some messaging and some ideas that, that kind of motivated you to run. Stick to them. Your values and your principles and your authenticity is really important. And that was something for me I wasn't willing to compromise on. Like, you you know why you're running. You know what, what motivates you and what you're angry about and what you're passionate to change. And that's so important. Stick to that. Um, and then finally, designing pledges that are... Um, kind of appealing and and people will latch onto and remember, but they're also achievable. Um, you can't, I, I, I learned this very quickly and, and I am a slight kind of perfectionist and it was frustrating. You can't fix everything and however many points you want to fit on your manifesto, the more you fit on, the smaller the text gets and the, <laughs> the less uh, comprehensible it is. So be realistic with your pledges, be kind of um, realistic of what you're going to be able to achieve and what you're going to be able to uh, promote and make it exciting, make it kind of empowering, but you can't fix everything that no one expects you to, um, and that's okay, yeah. Yeah, um, just ag agree with everything everyone has already said. Um, I was just gonna jump off of what Kelsey said in terms of you can't fix everything, but it doesn't mean you can't inspire people to think that you can't. Um, like, there's always a little bit of ambition that I feel like is nice to have in there. Um, and you know, the, the, the realism is good, but you can still go to a level, you know, if you're saying like, it's going to be free beer in the SU bar every Fridays, that could be doable, but probably not every day. Um, so that type of stuff can be really important. Um, for me, when I was coming up with mine, um, I've always been a big fan of like three key messages for this type of stuff. I'm not, I'm not quite a fan of, well, I'm not a fan of Keir Starmer full stop, but like all of the like five mission stuff that they're doing at the moment, like there's too many people are going to forget. Um, and three tends to fit quite nicely with most SUs and they're easy to remember as well. Um, so when I was running, um, like Kelsey and, and Elliot were talking about, it was knowing the big issues. I was a postgraduate officer and an academic officer. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was speaking very clearly to postgraduate researchers as well as postgraduate talk students, um, particularly the researchers and the things that were impacting them. So I think 
I had stuff on there around course reps, um, one around graduate teaching assistants, and then I think one around kind of um, academic experience. And I, I went around for a second year, I'm pretty sure I had not completely identical, but like almost the same manifesto points, just an updated version um, based on what I'd been working on already. Um, Cause I knew that those were issues that spoke to a lot of the students and they were things that I could realistically work on. We could, we could work on getting better contracts with GTAs. We could work on improving the academic experience. We could work on getting more training and more visibility for our reps. That was all something that we could do. Um, and then it made it easy for me as well, because I knew what I was talking about when it came to those things, um, which was is really important, especially when when you're out talking to loads of students, you need to remember what you're saying and and stay on message and not go off on a tangent, even though it does sometimes happen. Um, the the interesting thing that I had was in my first year we had online campaigning and then when I reran um it was the middle of a lockdown um so everything was online um which quite significantly changes how you do things because you can't you, you can't go and talk to people um which is very different so a lot of it was online and social media which feels much more like you're shouting into a void <laughs> um but it makes it so much more important to make your messaging engaging um and to make yourself visible and recognizable as well um I'm not saying that you have to wear like the same t-shirt for five days straight it will probably smell by the end of it so maybe don't um but you know so many campaigns that I've seen somebody's worn like a fun hat um that they've just become known for um one of the former presidents at the student union I work for is known for her orange hat because that's what she wore throughout the entire campaign people recognized her she was so visible on campus um so that type of stuff also contributes um it's definitely about what you say but it is also about being recognizable particularly on really big campuses um particularly on universities that don't have campuses as well um so thinking about that kind of in-person visual element um is also part of your messaging so I would say don't forget about that going last is hard <laughs> I agree with everything that everyone said already I think um definitely uh, I'd like to emphasize the around the um kind of simplicity of messaging I think that's a mistake I made in my first campaign um, it can be easy to, um, and I think it's important to have a proper think about all of the many things that you want to focus on if you do get the role. But the sad reality is that the majority of students probably won't read <laughs> the, to huge detail what you put in a manifesto. So I think having those, those really clear um, kind of aims and like condensed form of what, what it is that you're actually campaigning for is, is vital. Um, and again, those, those kind of using those different kinds of engagement, um, whether it's like having very punchy kind of like graphics. And I, I had, um, we had someone last year who was really good at um, kind of the, all the whole meme thing. And like, it was very a very entertaining social media account that managed, I think, to get a lot of kind of engagement in more senses than just being voted for. Um, that's important. But I think also the, the kind of being able to do an elevator pitch um, when you're speaking to people um, on campus or like, um, in lecture halls or, or wherever it is you decide to do in-person campaigning is um, something that will really um, help you be remembered by people and and often it is that kind of like that impact um, as, as Jane was saying about like um, people recognizing your face when they're going through and clicking who they're voting for um, and usually you can get that to happen from what you're saying but having a bit of a think about like how you're making an impact in terms of presence as well is, is really is really important yeah I went for snazzy earrings <laughs> I don't know if that actually helped my case but <laughs> didn't hurt thanks everyone it's a, a lot of practical and very useful tips from that so thank you um for the next question we'll focus on Jane and Blake for these um what were your experiences of being officers like? And what would you say were the pros and the challenges of being an officer? He's going first. <laughs> you go first, Blake, if that's uh, <laughs> Sure. So um, 
we'll start with the pros. Um, I think, yeah, as as was said in um in the presentation, I think that there are lots of opportunities to learn a lot. Um, you'll be um put in kind of board meetings and different kind of like um, yeah, different different events that you would not probably uh, get a chance to experience until way later in, in um, any other kind of organisation that you were joining, um, which is quite strange, uh, but also really beneficial. Um, I think um, you do get a lot more ability to set the agenda than you would uh, trying to influence um, or change an SU from not an officer position, um, which is really good, uh, especially like if you do have quite um, fundamental things that you think you um, should be changing uh, or need, need to change within um, SUs and universities. Um, I think a lot of aspects of the role are really, really fun. And I think for a lot, so I um, ran for an officer in the middle of my degree, uh, which um, is quite rare in my university. Um, but for a lot of people, um, they'll run kind of as they're about to graduate. And I think it's really nice to like, be able to stay at uni for a year longer and and kind of see like some of the things that maybe you were trying to fight for as a student but but coming against barriers like being able to like go into that and actually as um as was said like be the change that you kind of want to see <laughs> um it's good um but to move on to the cons I think um my experience of being a SAV was a mixed bag. I really enjoyed some elements of it, but other times it was incredibly frustrating. I think that if you have um, very, what's the word, um, even slightly radical <laughs> opinions about like how um, an organisation um, that is is supposedly progressive should be running, um, then it can often feel like you're fighting an uphill battle. Um, it really helps, like, I think, often um, and um, often you'll see like stabs with or, or offices with like similar kind of um, values and views. And I think that that often leads to a much more effective officer team that is able to like enact some of that change. But um, I think if you're kind of like shouting into, well, not into a void, but a little bit like that, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky not to burn out. Um, and I think that that's something that I wish I'd been a little bit more more conscious of before getting started so I think it's really um really important at um at this stage or maybe not like post-election if you're elected um to have a bit of a think about what the impact you want to have in your year is so that you can kind of like know what you're going to be fighting for from the start otherwise it's quite easy to kind of like lose lose your way a little bit or lose contact with all those networks of students that you've been part of and created um during your time before so I think yeah, that kind of ability to refocus, which again, I think comes hand in hand with having a really like clear message in your campaign and a really clear idea of what it is you actually want to be doing. If you keep those things central to, to um, it, essentially in your mind when you're doing, doing the role, it can help a lot. Um, yeah. Strong low to your last point there, Blake, like absolutely <laughs> like having those principles I think is so key because even though you run on a manifesto, things can happen and things can come up. You know, there could be a global pandemic six months in, um, like I, I experienced, and then you have to just like abandon everything because there's a global pandemic happening and we need to respond to this. Um, and that's one of the like, not, the pandemic is not a pro, just to be really clear, it's not a pro, but that type of leadership position um, and being in that type of position is can be a really like life-changing experience like I know so many people who have done officer roles and then gone on and done careers that they never would have planned for um before they'd become an officer you know I've I've worked with officers who have gone from quieter people um and are now so vocal and so much more confident um and it really can be like such a transformative experience um which I think is is one of the powers of those roles um and you know Blake was talking as well about the change that you can make and some of that can be kind of really really big hopefully um uh, maybe not as radical as we'd like it to be um, but some of it can also be really, really impactful for students as well. Um, and that is obviously a core part of the job, but a lot of it can really make such a huge difference to the student experience. Um, and 
to universities and how they run and having students voices particularly left-wing student voices in those rooms I think is really important um you get a huge chance to push and change the narratives in those rooms um particularly with senior leaders at universities um particularly in universities that are being run as businesses at the moment um having young radical people there um is just incredible um one to have that opportunity but also to be able to push that um and it also gives you so many opportunities to work on the national stage as well and to be involved in kind of pushing that narrative um both kind of in the NUS and outside of it and through like national media as well um yeah in terms of cons <laughs> cons as as Blake said it can be very very frustrating um I think I think I, I'd managed to go through like the entire range of human emotion in like one day at one point um because you can get an email that is like giving you something that you want and then you can have like another email from like the chair of your board or you can talk to like uh somebody at a university meeting and they're like yeah we're, we're not going to do that we don't want to do that um and then you can have a talk with a student um and you can really kind of help them so it's it's such a breadth of experience and you're doing so many different things um but it can also be incredibly frustrating because there is so much to do um and like Blake was talking about if you don't know what it is that you want to achieve and you don't hold in on to that it can be really really easy to get completely lost in it um and to finish your year or your two years and to go I don't know what I did <laughs> um uh you know but there is also so many opportunities to make change within that um but the change can be really slow which I think is the other frustrating thing um there are things that I was pushing as an officer um back in 2019 2020 um that I'm just now seeing my old university being like oh yeah we're doing this thing and I'm like oh yeah I remember being involved in that and it's like 2024 um so change can be really slow and it can be really incremental which when you've got big ideas when universities do need radical change right now it can be very frustrating um so I think and I, I think that's probably one of the things that is also worth thinking about is whether whether you want to be kind of in that system and creating change within it or whether you'd prefer to be pressuring it from outside. Um, and both of them are really, really valuable. Um, and it really depends what you prefer and what you want to be doing. Um, there are pros and cons to both. Also, like, why not do both? Um, be part of change everywhere. And yeah, it's definitely something that we see a lot in terms of like challenging for change is like can be like very draining sometimes. Um, but it's really good that I mean, even if you see it eventually later on, that things can actually change and can get changed. Um, and this kind of leads nicely to I think our last question. Um, and this is to everyone. So if you were to run again, uh, maybe what would you do differently or a bit of advice that you wish someone had told you before you ran or took up a position? Um, it'd be really great if you could share that with people. And I'm going to really shake up the order this time. And we'll go um, Elliot, Blake, Kelsey, and then Jane. I'll do a reminder as well. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Um... See, for me, it's a, it's a difficult one because I, I was really proud of the campaign I ran. Um, the guy who I ran against uh, was a tad uh, misogynistic. Um, he ended up gaslighting a, a lot of disabled students. Um, and so um, by the end of it, I was running quite a, a, a heavy campaign against him uh, running. So I was quite, you know, I was quite um, proud of the, you know, the the campaign I I ran, which was heavily motivated by my my own values. Um, I, I I think um, if I was to run again, it would probably my kind of if I was to give that advice, give advice to my past self, it would probably be. Uh, work on the messaging um i could probably could have been a bit more clear on my uh the points i ran um 
which were a bit wishy-washy when my opponent, um, their only point was getting back the student bar, which fair enough. Um, but also I, I probably could have had a bit more fun. I had quite a lot of fun with it, but you know, I, I, I put a lot of my energy into it. And um, I think, you know, having fun with these kinds of things is really important. Thank you. Is Blake next? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, uh, yeah, there are a few things I definitely would have done differently. Um, I uh, perhaps like would have made the biggest impact. Uh, weirdly, is um, in terms of like my own sanity during the weeks uh, would be to schedule social media posts. <laughs> if you um, schedule your social media posts in advance and have a proper like planned schedule for the week and especially if you're um if you're allowed a campaign team and you've got like a a, a group of people around you I think if you can have uh take as much of the kind of like variables and worrying about different things out of the week as possible it will make your your life um a thousand times easier uh in terms of like actual uh things that would be likely to change the outcome I guess um I think that I did not spend enough time thinking strategically about uh, student engagement, um, which sounds a bit weird and problematic, but um, I think for it, and it very much would vary, I think, depending on how political your student body is, but at Bath, ours is not, not the most political. <laughs> and I think that um, there is a lot of, um, a lot of students uh, in certain different groups, like for example, like in sports societies that I did not really make much effort to engage with um, beyond just like people that I already knew. So I think if you can find ways to um, get different groups on side, particularly if your election rules have like, um, allow like society endorsements or anything like that, which increasingly more of them will after all the freedom of speech stuff um, goes through, which I believe won't affect this election period, but I might be wrong. Um, and yeah, uh, find a way to uh, just get yourself recognizable in those spaces uh, would make a lot of difference. And it's easier said than done, um, especially if you, <laughs> sports, sports scary, <laughs> but like, you know, different, different groups, like whatever your area is and what your background is, if you can think about like the different students that you have absolutely no engagement with just in your day-to-day -day things, that will be really useful and, and definitely for also from a campaign development point, but in election week itself um, and the lead up to that, that's really valuable too. Yeah, it was Kelsey next and then Jane. Yeah, I think it's me next. Um, I would agree with, with all about their really useful points. The thing I wanted to actually raise here was, I think if I was doing this again and, and had to do something differently, the thing would actually, would be for me to have more confidence. And I say that, um, because I think one of the things that held my campaign back is I spent so much time knowing the elections were coming and kind of toing and froing and umming and ahhing about whether or not I was going to run. Um, and, you know, for a while on a daily basis, we'd go back and forth about whether or not I was going to run and whether I felt I was the right person and all that kind of stuff. And I think that that lost me valuable time in, in doing all the things we've just heard about there. So thinking about strategic um, sort of ways of engaging with students and making clear messaging and all that kind of stuff. So having confidence and I think you know if you're if you're here or if you're watching this at some point and you're passionate about making change on um, your campus or at your university if that's a passion that you have and you think that you've got the the skills and the the energy and the drive to to make those changes then you are the right person um, and you should go for it but I think that was something I would do differently and I think something I learned like during the campaign which I wasn't kind of aware of ahead of time and I'm so glad I know now is that um as as I think uh, Blake touched on it can it can be fun <laughs> and like it is it, like we had a great time we did all sorts of things I took a group of my friends stickering lampposts at like 2 a.m because we were allowed to do that and it was great um and so you know make make it fun make it enjoyable um it can be incredibly stressful especially when there's a social media aspect and that becomes all consuming so um it like you you make it fun and you make your own fun from it but also it's generally a joy, an enjoyable experience and embrace that and have a great time and then I'm last yeah completely agree on the fun point um I was 
my first one was just plan my campaign better to be honest I think both years even though I knew in my second year what it was going to be like and there was a pandemic I still did not plan my campaign properly um like you know you don't have to have things planned down to like the minute but having an idea of okay I'm going to be on campus for these hours I'm going to do my social media then I'm going to eat at this time I'm going to go to bed at this time um can be really useful um particularly for that kind of intense campaigning period um the other thing I was going to say was um kind of alluding to what Kelsey was talking about was like spend your campaign budget spend my campaign budget um like it's it's there to be used that is money that your student union is giving you um and as someone that has has to process those budgets honestly I can tell you we would much prefer that that money gets spent um because there's so many things that you can spend it on that make your campaign fun and interesting whether that's stickers or like I've known people to get like um stamps and then taken them to like the club nights and stamped them on people and they've woken up the next morning and been like what the heck is this and then look them up on Instagram and like um or you know like a fun costume or whatever it is like there's there's a lot you can do with it um and it's there to be spent and you should like use it if you can um the other thing in terms of both being a candidate and an officer is looking after your well-being um it's so easy for how long your voting period is the five days most of them are to just be like I just have to get through the five days but if you get to the end of the five days and you're like completely exhausted and you can't enjoy your results night like you're you'll have enjoyed it but it wouldn't have been worth it um so like sleep eat do stuff with your friends look after yourself and particularly as an officer as well like that's so important because you know you're in the role for a year and there's no point in getting to like Christmas and you're completely burnt out um yeah that's in terms of campaigning in terms of being an officer itself um I think working with other officers is really powerful like one in your student union obviously because you have to but like linking up with other officers in your region nationally um can be really really powerful a lot of the big change that we've seen in like national legislation has come from officers working together um and pressuring the government and doing that collectively um which shows that there is real power in the role um and remembering that and using that um i think is really really important um but yeah, enjoy it. It's great fun. Um, like go into it with the mindset of I'm going to have fun and I'm going to enjoy it regardless of whether you win. And then you'll have a great time and hopefully you'll get elected. Exactly. And I like Kelsey's, uh, I'm going to take it as a tip to go to a Taylor Swift club night because I would always endorse that um, activity. Um before we wrap up, I just want to um, ask um, the people who are attending the call who aren't on the panel if they have any questions. Um, again, just feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand. I'll give you a couple minutes. Um... Uh, I'm not seeing anything in the chat just yet, but I will long out the outro. Um, yeah, and also if you do have any questions at any point um, that maybe pop up in your mind after the event, um, feel free to email um, either me or Amelia. Our emails are all on the Young Greens website um, and we can pass them on to our panel and get back to you. Um, you can also follow uh, GPW students, which is the kind of out like mine and, a, mine and Amelia's remit. Um, we, we share all of our like student stuff on Instagram. And obviously you can follow the Young Greens and see what they're doing as well. Um, and yeah, feel free to watch this recording, um, get in touch with us. It's really nice to have everyone here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for turning up tonight and um, sharing all of your experiences. It's been really wonderful to hear from you all. Um, and yeah, thank you for running. Thank you for sharing your experiences, like I just said. And uh, yeah, hope everyone has a lovely evening. Don't know if Amelia, you have any thoughts as well? No, I don't think so. Amazing. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. It's been absolutely wonderful. And yeah, hopefully see you soon. And